Hi everyone, and welcome to another video in the Engaging with Art series. Today I want to discuss the topic of scale, which might sound a bit mundane or pedestrian on the surface, but I hope that you will quickly discover that there is a bit more to the concept of scale when it comes to artwork than just simply size or dimensions. On one hand, yes, when you're looking at scale, you have the physical aspects of a work of art. So for example, you have the dimensions of a particular canvas. For a three-dimensional work of art, such as a statue, maybe it's the weight or the volume, that actually becomes a factor as well. Scale becomes very heavily dependent upon medium. So, for example, if we're looking at a film, the scale, quote-unquote, might be the runtime, or for a novel, it might be the number of pages, or for a music album, it might be the number of tracks or the total length and time of the album. Simultaneously, I also view scale as the amount of effort required on part of the artist to produce the work itself. So this then calls into mind things such as labor or the logistics or the development and the actual execution of a work that may not always be very visible on the surface. There are also plenty of examples where scale may be very small, but that doesn't mean that the hours going into it were not great. And that's one of the most important things I want to call to mind in these definitions is that scale physically may not represent the amount of time or effort that was put in by the artist to produce the final work that you see before you. This is also where technique comes into play as well and becomes a major factor. Now that we've defined things a bit, what are the actual ramifications upon the production and the work of art itself? When it comes to visual art, technique is really the driving force. If a painter is using a very large, thick brush, for example, they can cover a great deal of surface area in a small amount of time. Whereas if a drawer with pencils is covering the same amount of space with a single point, it's going to take a vastly larger amount of time in order to cover that same distance. And even painters can use a very tiny brush point as well, especially if you consider pointillism or artists like Seurat, who quite literally composed large canvases with just individual points one at a time placed very carefully. The technique that the artist employs utilizing the medium will affect the hours considerably. And that's one of the reasons why it's very important to remember that technique is a major factor here. Ultimately, when we see a finished piece, we just see that one canvas or that one picture plane in isolation, but it oftentimes very poorly represents the actual amount of time that was put in hours-wise just actually producing that work. If we consider other media like film or music, sometimes scale may become budgetary. For example, with a film that's maybe trying to capture an entirely different world, it's going to require a lot of costuming. It's going to require a greater amount of sets. Sometimes you have special effects and you have greater audio design and what you're doing essentially is requiring more and more individuals and talent and then of course budget to produce one solitary final product. The same is true for music as well. Consider how much effort would really be required to organize an entire orchestra to come into a studio to record, say, even just three tracks of music for an album. And even if those tracks are only three or four minutes a piece, we are looking at potentially tons of labor involved there because obviously not only do you have the musicians in a factory, you need the space, you need the larger space, you're going to need to probably house or provide for all of those individuals for whatever amount of time is needed. And obviously you have audio mixing of all those various different instruments. And so again, another instance here where the actual finished product may not fully convey just how much was actually required by part of the creator. Across all media, I think the greatest two things that always bloat when it comes to scale and it comes to the grandeur of a particular process or final product is going to be labor and budget. And so this is something that we always want to keep in mind because it's oftentimes not clearly identifiable on the surface of the final product. It's important to remember that sometimes even the simplest appearing artwork can actually have an incredible amount of complexity that was required to actually bring it to life. And this is another point that I really want to drive home here too, is that oftentimes there's a great deal of effort put into the development or the inspiration or the conception or the research behind a particular work of art that oftentimes requires many, many hours but doesn't actually show itself on the surface or even come into the play of the actual producing of the work, since this is all things that happened prior to that beginning. So just like any video in this series, I want to discuss why something like scale would be usable for an artist or why an artist might deliberately employ scale. 
When it comes to visual art and beholding a finished piece that actually is quite large, for example, I think relative size is a factor that artists may employ because it helps us as the viewer to feel small. It helps us to feel our finitude. It helps us to consider our simplicity in the midst of something that is far greater than us as just one of the physical attributes. I think when we behold any sort of work across any medium that is more complex or more rich or more interwoven, it can sort of draw us into that deeper sense of meaning of life or possibilities of what other things may be at work under the surface in relation to our own lives, our own narratives. I think there's a great deal of catharsis that comes with viewing something that is really fantastical or something that is really otherworldly, something that can really take us out of our moment and our existence and just help us to sort of revel in something that is completely out of this world. And so that's another reason why sometimes scale with the physical attributes can just be very compelling as a tool for artists. Then of course there are the more thematic and conceptual aspects of scale as a tool. I think on one hand the burden of scale can be diffused upon the viewer when beholding something that is very complex, very dense. As I was saying earlier, that sense of grandeur is another theme that can kind of naturally coat over a viewer when beholding a work of art. I think when we behold something that is very large or something that is very grandiose, it really does force us as viewers sort of more into the actual work itself. It almost forces us to engage more directly with it because we feel it as a more intimidating presence. And then on the other hand, when we're looking at work of art, which most of what I've been discussing kind of focuses on this, work of art that is very deceptive when it comes to scale, meaning it appears simplistic or it appears as though it would have taken very little effort, but the truth is that there's a great deal of hours and labor behind it. I think that sort of thing can actually bring a dialogue between artist and viewer about work, about effort, about what is required of us and the meaning of art and the meaning of these things that we might consider non-pragmatic or flippant even. The takeaway here, however, is just to remember that scale is a tool utilized by the artist. And oftentimes it is an effort to create some sort of dialogue. And we always want to be open to that. And we always want to consider why is the artist making this choice to produce something in this size, in this scale, with this effort in relation to me as the viewer. And that of course is a good segue into what can we then do with these tools? What can we do with this knowledge about scale? As I keep trying to drive home, I think the biggest thing we need to remember as viewers is that scale is not always correspondent to the actual size, length, what have you, of the artwork that we finally behold. Again, always consider the medium in relation to scale. Always consider the technique is a major factor that this painting may have taken hundreds of hours, whereas something that looks very similar could have only taken a few hours, depending on the actual technique employed by the artist. One thing that may be helpful for us as viewers too, in very concrete terms, is typically more realism in an artwork is going to require more hours. Obviously, there are plenty of examples, such as printmaking, that could completely blow that out of the water. However, when we're looking at more traditional mediums, such as painting, such as drawing, if we see a greater amount of realism, typically we can anticipate there to have been more hours at play there. As viewers, we also need to look at scale as all of the background that went into a work, as I was discussing earlier, the inspiration, the actual conception, all of the research, the sketching, there are sometimes countless and countless hours that are going into the actual production of piece on those conceptual and decision-making levels that are not tabulated into the final hour count or are not visible on the surface. And this is something that we need to keep in mind. In order to gather this information, I think it's really important as viewers to seek out what it was the artist did to produce a work. Seek out those interviews, seek out those videos, seek out whatever the artist provides to better explain how many hours did this take? What sort of production process do they use? What were the logistical hurdles that needed to be overcome in order to bring to life what it is we see before us? Again, we may behold a simple painting that's as small as eight inches by 10 inches in the final form. However, everything required to bring that to life and bring it before your eyes in the gallery or museum where you see it is not often on the surface. When you when you take in this information about the artwork, always let it inform your understanding. As I discussed earlier, this is about a dialogue. The artist is trying to say something, the artist is trying to express. Art is about communication. And so, what is it the artist might be trying to say? What is it that is making me feel something in relation to the vastness or the minuteness of this work? Again, sort of deceptiveness here. If I'm beholding a work that I was told required hundreds and hundreds of hours and yet it looks so simplistic, 
where is that tension affecting me and what does it mean to me and all of these things are ideas we want to sit with we want to suss out we want to consider as viewers to maybe better understand how the artwork is meant to be understood or what it is meant to communicate the last thing as viewers we can do yet still something that's very important is just to simply learn to have a respect and appreciation for different media, different techniques because of the scale. When we as viewers bear in mind these physical, mental resource demands that are upon an artist to produce a final piece, it helps us to gather a better appreciation for the actual work that goes into what an artist does or the actual career that is art itself or art making. Again, always bear in mind that what you behold before you may have required a vast amount of hours on part of just one individual. Ultimately, Artists may work differently than most of society or most of regularly employed hourly workers. However, it does not mean that their work or their processes are any less laborious necessarily. And I think this is something that I really want to make sure as viewers, we just learn to have a deeper respect and appreciation for. I think I'll stop there for now. Thank you so much for taking the time to view this. And if you found it worthwhile or enjoyable, I hope you'll share it with somebody else who may feel the same. And until the next one, Take care, everybody. I see you. I know. You're terrible. You're terrible. Stop.